<laughs> but once inside, he starts shouting for Sander Holt. And once she sees him, he starts asking her about Kaylin. And Sander Holt knows exactly who this motherfucker is. Yeah, the only person that would come in asking about Kaylin. Everybody else here knows exactly what happened to her. Yeah. He's the only guy in the city who doesn't. <laughs> Plus, he's going to stick out. It's the intense, attractive man walking in with a sword. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the guy that Kaylin's Super all about. sexy dude. Yeah. Where's Kaylin? <laughs> oh. You're him for You're sure. You're that guy, all right. Yeah, I get it. Okay. <laughs> it's unbelievably sad as she tells him that Kaylin was beheaded yeah. and he can't wrap his brain around it. He's like, I came as fast as I could, I swear. <sighs> MCU spoiler, if you haven't watched <laughs> the Endgame, it reminded me a lot of Star-Lord when oh. he's like, <laughs> no. Like, uh, it was just like the denial Yeah, part I of had it. to do this. No, you didn't. When yeah. he's and I can't I can't obviously do it justice, yeah. but just the the sound in his voice, the helplessness, yeah, of it that like, was this yeah. one thousand. I came as fast as I could. I swear, as if as long as you were hurrying, you were promised it, you, somebody would stay Kalen's execution. Like, but I tried hard. <laughs> You well, literally did everything you could do. Yeah, I think just the belief that he he if he tried his best and did everything right, things would turn out right. Yeah, but unfortunately, but. Uh, real life happens, and that sucks. It's just it's again it's seeing our hero being helpless. Yeah, and it only happens a couple of times, but like fuck, man, when he is, he is, and you really feel for him, like. You can't read that and not feel terrible. Yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Richard has Sander Holt tell him everything that happened, and he finally accepts that he had to let Kaylin die to defeat the Keeper. Like, he did make a choice. He could have come here and saved her, but then the Keeper would have fucking won. And the prophecy beat him. Like, he said he, said he was going to win over it, and he didn't. And that's... Like, outside of the fact yeah. that Kaylin died, and that's sad, it's also like, fuck, I lost. <laughs> Failure hurts. I mean, just for a little bit of levity here, like, Richard fucking hates riddles anyways, yeah. so <laughs> he's gotta be irritated just a little bit at that. Yeah. Like, you know, prophecy, it's just stupid, mindless riddles. They're not important. And then this one gets him in... The worst way. Well, and I think um, it's also frustrating because he kind of had figured out the riddle, right? He figured out all the different little pieces and how to make them all work for him. And he had the fucking dragon and he, he almost did it. If the dragon yeah. wouldn't have been hurt, it would have been fine. Yeah, it probably would have worked. He would have been there just a couple hours later. Granted, at the end of the day. So who knows exactly when they did it. Yeah. They did it at the festival. I think it was at really noon say. or something. Oh, okay. So even so, he wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Yeah. Which, oh gosh, now I'm just realizing that. That's so sad. Uh, but yeah, no, he had the best possible chance of almost impossible odds. And still failed. Yeah. And Sander Hole at this point tells him where the council is because he asks because he's mad because he knows that that's the reason that this all happened. And despite her being like, don't do it, he sets off in a fury that way. Cool, because I'm going that way right now. You say it was that way? Thank you. Hey, I don't know if you knew this. Like, I have superpowers, but, like, <laughs> my first superpower that I ever got was anger, and I got a lot of it That's right, right. now. <laughs> Ultraviolent. <laughs> so, Richard, on his way to see the council, he doesn't notice if any of the guards are reacting to him on his way. He doesn't give a shit. Two unfortunate sons of bitches <laughs> try to get in Richard's way. And Richard decides to throw a fireball at them. Now, last we knew, Richard had a candle-esque fireball. He was like, it's a fireball, but it's, you know, whatever. The one he conjures now blasts a door, a big door, out of, like, the center chamber for this council, right? Blows the door wide open. 
Yeah. Like off, like gone, actually takes out chunk of wall. Yeah, makes a big ass hole in the wall. <laughs> Giant fireball, and he walks through the fireball into the chamber with the council. Like a badass. Yeah. Who obviously they freak out. Like, what the fuck? This this dude just blew up the wall, walked through fire. He's still fine. Hair looks great. And he smells really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's totally fine. Totally wizard vibing. And I love it. <laughs> And so Richard's like, hey, did anybody vote against the execution? Because that matters. Yeah. If you didn't think it was right, then I'm not going to kill you. But <laughs> Thurnston? Thurnston. Yeah. Yeah, he's Seriously. got a great name. He's wonderful. His parents did not like him. <laughs> Thurnston. I'm sorry if there's a Thurnston out there. I, I, I... Love your Don't name. I think there is. But, <laughs> uh, you know, he says, no, it was legal. It was unanimous. This guy is head dick, obviously. And Richard decides that is not acceptable and uses the sort of truth to cut this man from ear to crotch. Yeah, he just like ran up in this room and then jumped on the table and was like, well, bow! And like <laughs> chopped a dude in fucking half. Not, ear to crotch. Yeah, it like. Hor not horizontally, vertically chopped a dude in half. Like a little of both, but just yeah, just this is one of those things where I liked action movies. Damn your plot! If things are blowing up and bullets are flying, I'm pretty happy. And and so I started to read this book because Richard is such an incredibly violent person that my wife used that as leverage against yeah. me, and it worked fantastically. Um, but these, these little things that he can do, I live for <laughs> when, when Terry goes out of his way to just be incredibly violent and gory and like in an action movie kind of way, I'm like, that's good writing. Man. <laughs> My simple man brain is like, yeah, yes, get the this bad is what guy. I want. <laughs> it's great. So after he kills head Dick, the rest of the council <laughs> Falls to his sword, like, right after. He just, like, spins in a circle, chops them all down. They're all dead. And then he stays up on the fucking desk, yelling about being the seeker and putting the council to death for the murder of the mother confessor. The guards look at him. They look at the bodies. They look at the hole in the wall. And they, they're like, are you a wizard? <laughs> he's like, yeah, guess I am. They sheathe their swords and are like, cool, not my fucking problem. Yep. That's wizard business. Bye. I, I'm not in the wizard fighting business, <laughs> so you have a nice day, sir. Literally all you had to say, bud. You could have walked in here <laughs> being like, I'm a wizard. We all would have filed out. <laughs> oh, that's great. Like, nobody would have fought you on the way in here. Wizard. Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah. Like, show me your pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After they all leave, Richard's left alone. Okay. He sits in Kaylin's chair, thinking about how he failed, even though he did his very best to do the right thing. He puts the sword down, because he can't depend on the magic to allow him to do what he feels he must do. He grabs his knife, puts it to his chest, and at the last moment he pulls out her hair, and he thinks about how she wanted him to know that she loved him, and he just wants the pain to stop. And this is kind of the feeling that we talked about a little bit when he was back at the the pop. like. But he didn't have this, like, hopelessness to him. Even though he didn't think he was always going to get out of the palace, she was still going to be alive. She was still out there somewhere. Yeah. So, In a hundred years, we'll see. But, like, right now, yeah. Yeah. So despite the fact that he still has, like, Zed and Chase and he just saved the world of life, if Kaylin's not there, he doesn't want it. Right. Sad. It's very sad. And... <laughs> <laughs> I know we we laugh to get through it, but like we're looking at Richard about to commit suicide. Yeah. Mid chapter. In Kalen's chair. In Kalen's chair with Kalen's hair. Oh, it's a rhyme. Such a fun rhyme. It's a super sad <laughs> rhyme. Good lord, I need a beer for that. Hey, coincidentally. Oh yeah, it's definitely time. It's it was time about break. 10 minutes ago when we started talking <laughs> about all that super sad shit. Well, tonight we are drinking Founders Masagave Lime Premium Hard Seltzer. It's premium. It's not like that low-grade shit. This is high-grade shit, okay? It's not regular seltzer. It's hard <laughs> seltzer. It's 110 calories. I think we've had 
maybe another one of these on the show before. I know we've had the actual beer on the show before. Yes, we have. This is very similar. It tastes like a... It's got very large <laughs> margarita vibes. Like, you got the lime, you got the agave. Sprite and salt and lime. Yeah, it's like That's seltzery. That's what it tastes like to me. You know. Um, it's all right. You can drink it. It's light. Yeah. Like, great. I would say you could take these on the river. Yeah. You know, and, and they would last you. They're not super, super strong, but it does taste good. And it is fruity. It's got good, good flavor. And, like, I like margaritas, so <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> Yeah, no, actually, it's 4.5%. Yeah, see? Not terrible. Yeah, and it's gluten-free for all you gluten abstainers. Well, I was just waiting on you to say that. Now I can have more, because I already did. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we are definitely going to have some more of this, and we will be back right after these messages. Hey guys, Nate from All The Things, and I want to talk to you a little bit about 4 Acre Freedom. So 4 Acre Freedom is a family-owned and operated one-stop shop for everything that you're probably already looking for. They've got vinyl-laid shirts, they've got hoodies, and don't forget your beer koozies. Those are, like, essential. We have some, actually, with the All The Things logo on it, and they look pretty sick, just saying. They've got custom-made rings in jewelry, which Jade and I also have, and they're fucking badass. We got these ones. You guys, you guys. It's like stainless steel, but then there's a core. Jade's has, like, meteorite in it. I think mine's got, like, dinosaur bone in it, and they glow, and it's like, they're fucking cool. (laughs) I can't do it justice with with a microphone. You guys really have to see it. Again, we are going to post these on our Facebook page so you guys can get a better look at them. They're awesome. He can do custom woodwork and signs. Like, you want a badass grace or a quote, or even, like, a picture of something from the book, he can do that. He's got a thing that just, like, it'll etch it all out on the wood real fucking cool. You get exactly what you want every single time. He can do leather work. You want a custom sheath for your knife or perhaps your sword of truth? You need a new belt? He can do that, too. I mean, you could put those two things together and probably make a scabbard. Just saying. And also, they have farm-to-table bread, candies, and confections, which are delicious. I have tried them. Every Look, look. here's the thing. Everything they do is of the best quality. And it's all literally handmade. This is not that kind of shop that just buys a bunch of shit cheap online and then you get cheap stuff for a little bit more. No. The value is there. The quality is there. Everything they do is awesome, and you should check them out for yourself. They're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and of course, you can check them out at 4acrefreedom.com. High quality, handmade. And we are back. So we fade out on Richard's heart-wrenching situation and fade into Kaylin's. (laughs) Bitch is alive and well, guys. She's fine. (laughs) So Richard doesn't need to be so sad. I don't know what he's worried about. He just needs to read the next page. You start getting real, like, Romeo and Juliet vibes here. Like, oh, there was a fake death, and now he's going (laughs) to kill himself, and then she's going to kill herself, and it's going to be terrible, right? Just everybody's going to commit suicide. Yeah. One after the other until there's no (laughs) characters left. I can't handle that, Jade. No wonder there's no books after this one. That's right. There's only two. (laughs) So we get a real quick note about how Addie still thinks she's Elda. So Zed's memory recovery situation did nothing for her. And her, Kaylin, Zed, Ahern, Chan, and Orsk have all been traveling for two weeks since the winter solstice and are now in an abandoned inn. I almost kind of forgot that Chan was with him. That's why I named off all of them, because there, there's a lot more people here than I thought would be with them still. They've got a little company there. Yeah. Like a Hearn. Why is a Hearn still there? Yeah, I don't know. They paid him to transport Zed and Addy, and then after they got where they were going, I figured he would part ways, but maybe now he's... Helping with he's the cause, and he's, you know, yeah. oh, I've seen too much. I'm invested now. <laughs> yeah, because like Aiden Drill, he should have left. He was paid yeah. to take them there. In all fairness, probably should have left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These people are dealing with some scary shit. Now you've been paid. Please go. Go away. Bye. <laughs> 
So about a week ago, they ran into Prince Harold. Like, they just, they ran into all these people real randomly. Who, after having escaped death himself in Aedendrill, had lain in wait to save his sister, Queen Cirilla, before she was 